big black box. Staring at me. I had to have it. I had to have it. No one's fun anymore! Whatever happened to fun? You're listening to the Drag Dungeon Podcast with your hosts, Jay and John. Hey! Welcome back to the broadcast, your favorite podcast. You ask for this shit if you're easily offended. We don't recommend it. You ask for this shit, so here it is. you. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. Welcome back to Unjust Just Like Crap. I'm John. This is Jay. What's up, y'all? We are back for episode five, season two of And Just Like That. Episode is titled Trick or Treat. Jay? Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. Jay, any general thoughts about the episode before we begin? Oh, so many. Well, first of all, I love a holiday episode. Me too. Like, when I saw that it was a Halloween episode, I got excited because I love Halloween episodes. There's so many like iconic Halloween episodes of series like Roseanne that original like that first Halloween one where they have the haunted house. Mm -hmm. Like that's iconic. There's there's so many Christmas ones like you know the Facts of Life where they go sing in that prison they perform. (laughs) I love that. We all know that episode. We all do. And then Blair's saying I'll be home for Christmas. And anyway, I love that episode. There's so many great holiday episodes. So when I saw that, I got excited. But they're usually sitcoms, whereas this is something else. This is a shitcom. A shitcom. That's <laughs> that's pretty brilliant, actually. That's that's exactly what it is. Um. Now, look, this episode was not good by any means, but I think it was the best one of this season so far. Agreed. I totally agree. It was a roller coaster. It had a moments that I actually sort of chuckled during, and then parts that I wanted to throw something at the TV. So it was like up and down a little bit yeah it's like i mean clearly they are listening and they have taken some notes there's a little more of the fun plucky music happening yeah the music was very weird like when she's walking um whenever seema or naya naya yeah naya leaves that guy's apartment this music's like la, 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 la. it's literally laws People <laughs> la, 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 la. i'm like what is this it's music? weird but i was I was kind of into it. Like, I was too. I was too. There, there's a little more of the fun music, which helps us, you know, guides us how to feel about things. Mm-hmm. And there's there's a few more funny moments. I, the scenes are shorter. They're, they don't drone on with no purpose like the past three or four. There's some physical comedy, which I love. Everybody thinks they're Lucille Ball all of a sudden, which whatever. I'll take... I know. Like, where did this even come from? Like, this episode to me really kind of harkened back to Sex in the City in a way. It did. Right? Because, like, a short relationship for Carrie that really honestly was disappointing that it didn't work out because I actually like that guy. But, um, <laughs> I kind of did too. Yeah. And, but it was fun how they met. We'll get to it, of course, how they met. You know, and then the other characters, they had their their moments that I, you know, that was kind of whimsical, dare I say. Yeah, there were moments. And it was a little more lighthearted and fun. And maybe, maybe that's just because it was a holiday episode. I hope not. I hope this. But the thing is, we're halfway through the season. I think this season is 11 or 12 episodes. That's, I Googled it and that's what came up. I'm just believing it. But, so it's kind of too late because... The first, That's, I wrote that down. Too little, too late? Question mark. Yeah, yeah. A great song by be. JoJo. It might be, and you know, um, it, it might be too little, too late. How how far? But the bar is so low. You know, this really could have been a crap episode, and we just liked it because it's not as bad as the others. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's definitely not good, but it's the best of the worst. Yes. Um. So. Let's get started. Before we begin, thank you for all to all of our new subscribers. We appreciate it very much. It is, it takes like zero effort to click subscribe and hit that thumbs up. (laughs) I I mean, I know it's obnoxious for us to ask, but can you please subscribe, please, for the love of God? Purple Tunnel, ask a friend. 
Yeah, if you don't have arms, whatever. If you don't, if you don't have arms, put a stick between your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a show on TLC. <gasps> that would be awesome. I, we would watch. We would, and we would go to your YouTube page for that show and like it. Absolutely, and hit the the notification bell. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm that person now, but we're just accepting it. So Miranda slept over at Chase. They're in New York now, so Miranda's at least closer to her child and estranged husband. Miranda slept over at Chase's apartment that she can't afford, uh, and is woken up by her alarm, which wakes Che up too, obviously, and she has to go home to wake brady up and then go to her class is she teaching class did i miss something i don't know what the hell she's doing because it never went anywhere with that she got up and she i miranda apologized to che i noticed three times in this episode she just keeps saying like sorry about the alarm sorry she stubbed her toe it's like jesus christ Why sorry she, i'm a woman she, sorry she's a i have sorry feelings character now she is sorry everything is oh Oh, um, oh, you know, it's all just this, like, I don't know. I know there's a lot of talk about what happened to her character, but I just want her to grow up and, like, be like, you know what, Shay, fuck off. I stubbed my toe. Get over it, bitch. My alarm went off. Shut the fuck up. You know, like. I mean, where is the Miranda that we loved? I mean, she was, she's infinitely more successful than Che at this point. Number one, she has, like, how old is Che, do you think? 40? Oh, they, he's, uh, they said, like, 40, 42, 46, would you say? Okay, 42. so Miranda's at least 10 to 15 years older. Yeah. And, and has purchased a home in Brooklyn, which is no small feat. It's not like purchasing a home in Kansas. It's, anyway. Um, mm so Miranda stubs her toe, which is pretty funny. Ow! I always liked when Miranda or uh, Cynthia stubs, Nixon... Stub, stub, stubs her toe. <laughs> yeah, she got... I love it when she's injured. Oh, I do. And she got cum in her eye earlier this season. Hi. And she was always very... She, broke, she hurt her back one time in the original series, and then Carrie was too busy to go get her, so she sent Aiden over. Do you remember that? Yes, and then Carrie peed the bed. Wait, who called, caused her to pee the bed last last season it was miranda because she was getting fingered in the in the thing <gasps> oh, oh my okay. god is that wait is that real that's what happened isn't it remember she was in bed because whatever I don't i can't think of that now but she peed the bed because miranda, miranda was too busy with che in the kitchen wow i didn't realize that till now it's kind of like revenge for carrie yeah. being too busy to go get and she sent aiden over right. now so now when i miranda was in the kitchen and che Lost their Lee press on inside of Miranda. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> now, when somebody sends their husband over to get you and you sprain your back, are you embarrassed or do you just lean in? <laughs> if someone comes to get you or bend over when, when, when you sprain your back, when you're getting out of the shower or something. Okay. Yeah. And, and one of your friends sends their husband over. Are you embarrassed or are you just like, let's roll with it? Because you're naked? Well, what's their husband look like? Paint the picture. <laughs> hmm. A bearded, brawny daddy. Oh, then, oh, uh, my legs, you know, despite what's wrong with my back. <laughs> now accepting applications. You just bend right, <laughs> right over. Right. I'm already on the floor and injured. What <laughs> I mean, if some, if I knew somebody's hot husband was coming over, I might feign an injury. Just... <laughs> right. Throw yourself. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is your husband available? You. I don't want to bother you. Okay. <laughs> So Miranda goes back to her house and I'm, I'm a little bit like, I, I mean, obviously I want Steve to win and I, w I wish he would fight harder. We haven't even, has he had a single word of dialogue even yet? Just when they were at the um, therapist, Steve is oh, like, right. Miranda, I can't do Steve's voice. His voice is so Miranda, <laughs> Miranda, let's lie some more to Brady. So he'll be even more screwed up than he currently is. I wish they would. Fu I wish they would show us what Steve's up to because I would like to see him dating, mating, With clearly working out because of the whole, you know, his, boxing thing he did. His revenge body is totally kicking. Okay, so Miranda's back at home pretending to be. Now she's back pretending to be a mother, and she's carving a pumpkin and making p flapjacks for Brady. Uh, and he's like, Brady could not care less. He's like, really. Well, he's so stupid. Well, first of all, when I saw this episode, I saw Miranda. I totally thought the pumpkin was her head. Oh yeah, because her, I did. Her hair is so orange. I thought Brady was going to come in and try to carve her head because I like that would have been that fun. Hair color is the color is out of control. Pumpkin or pumpkin spice orange. 
<laughs> That's her hair. Her hair color is even basic. Do you think Brady's cute? We talked. We discussed this before. I do not. I, I know he's he like, like very. Chef. I know he's very young, but looks like the chef from Ratatouille. But no, he's like, mom, you don't have to come over here and cook for me. I'm like, uh, you just called just recently, bawling your eyes out because your skank of a girlfriend left you. Boo hoo hoo hoo, and your mom's cooking for you, and you're like, you don't have to cook for me. I'm like, she just changed her diapers. Apparently, you wuss. And, she, and and she's like, do you want to carve the pumpkin and have breakfast? And he says, quote, isn't this house scary enough? Good for you, Brady. You are shady. I'm surprised he's not gay with a sh- shady with a, Brady. A shady Brady with a read like that. So okay, then <laughs> the library is open. It's wide open. So next we see Carrie and Miranda going to walking. It looks like through the park to Charlotte's fundraiser costume party. Miranda doesn't realize that Carrie is in costume because she wears stupid clothes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's like I'm Her- Helen Gurley Brown. I'm like, so Helen Gurley Brown dresses ugly too. Who? So it's, who even is it? Who'd she say? Helen Gurley Brown. Who is that? Do we know? Uh, look, I don't want anybody to come for me, so I'm gonna say nothing. The oh, word no. femi- feminist pops in my head. I could be wrong. Please don't come for me. Public just, figure. Oh, n- public I, figure. <laughs> I shouldn't have even asked because now <laughs> the top <laughs> twenty comments are gonna be, "How dare you not know who this?" Is? I know. Oh my We're god, get over it. We're not here for that. Okay. Charlotte. So Charlotte and Harry are dressed up as characters from the American. Charlotte's dressed as Carrie Russell and Harry is dressed as a drag king. And I, I don't know what they're supposed to be. He looks like a serial killer. And that does. lace front girl. Was that a lace front? Because that looked like a lace front to me. Uh, the unit. I'm sure it was. <laughs> the unit. Um, I Have you tried to watch the American? Just side note. I tried watching once and I couldn't get into it. No, but I'm not really into Carrie Russell. Like, I just never watched Felicity or any of that shit. You you still haven't forgiven her for cutting her hair. That's okay. Absolutely not. Her and Jennifer Grey getting a nose job. Both of them are dead to me. I agree. Like, let it go. Mm. Go work at Burger King. Okay, Anthony is dressed as a devil, dancing with Lisa Todd Wexley. Dancing, quote unquote, dancing. That man cannot dance. His for the to save his life, he could not. Well, he's he's moving. He was more. Having a having a, a spasm or something out there, yeah. Yeah, uh, Lisa Todd is dressed as the Bride of Frankenstein. Sexy Bride of Frankenstein. Naya is dressed as Eartha Kitt's Catwoman, um, and Seema is also there. I don't think she's in costume at all, which is appropriate. Yes. Naya is bummed out that there are no hot single guys at the party, except of course, the hot guy with the harness on that Anth- the straight, you know quote straight guy that anthony hooked up yeah with. well you know these costumes so charlotte and um harry kept having tried to ex- tell explain to everybody what they are you always, we all have those friends that I mean, you have a friend that go to a halloween costume party and dress in something that nobody knows what the hell they are and they have to explain it every time like i'm the stock market crash of 19 you know like it's always some costume you don't know what the hell it is and they have to explain it to you uh, yeah i mean that i find that annoying because number one i'll be drunk at that party I'm not trying to think or use my brain in any way. It should just be a, a uniform, and it should just be like Mean Girls. We're just trying to look hot and slutty, you know? Yeah, something simple, like go as a sexy nurse, a sexy minion, a sexy Dr. Evil, like something like that. Hot Jesus, <laughs> bring your own cross. Um, so Seema and Naya are talking because I guess they know each other, even though they barely interacted. And Seema... Yeah, they're best friends, apparently. There's a lot of that. Seema tells Naya that the best, best place and the blessed place to meet hot rich guys is a five-star hotel bar. I agree with that. Um, Carrie agrees to join Naya and Seema while they go troll for rich dick at a five-star hotel bar. And they were joking, like, they were going to take her where to meet men, which, you know, totally makes me think of that designing women where they read that book about what to do to catch a man and they read where to go meet men. It's to stand outside a men's room. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so they were standing the... outside, or go to the grocery store. Like Mary Jo's like all completely made up shopping. Either. Oh, right. And then Anthony's like, Mary Jo, I didn't know you lived in this neighborhood <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so what's the, I'm going to ask you, what's the most pathetic, I mean, gay people are pretty pathetic in general when it comes to trying to meet each other. We just hop on Grindr. But is there anywhere that you have actually trot gone with the intent of trying to meet a guy like what's the most pathetic if you if you're comfortable what's sharing pathetic place um office uh no uh, home depot okay i don't think that's pathetic i think that makes no. total sense 
Yeah, Home Depot. Yeah, or maybe the library when I was in college, maybe. Okay. But I think Home Depot is, is a good one. Yeah. I lived, I lived by a Home Depot previously. I don't know where the most <laughs> I don't know where the most pathetic places I have gone, but I've definitely almost crashed my car trying to see hot lawnmower guys in the summer. Right. Um, well, I, I knew a guy who worked at Office Depot that was in defeat. Just a side note. Oh, well, he sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, never mind. That's a whole other story. We've got Go to Patreon. Feet. <laughs> Go to Patreon. <laughs> yeah, by the way, our Patreon is so dirt cheap. It's yes. $3, and we have... We just uh, posted our 91st episode, so we have almost 100 oh. hours of content there that you have access to. And I'm sorry, but we're promoting it. If you would like it, a lot of people say, oh, we miss you. Or where have you been for the past year? Where's your content? It's all there. That's where our podcast is for the most part. All for you. It's all for you. I know that you want it. So please go to patreon.com slash drag dungeon. The link is in the description. It's $3 a month. You will love it. And there's a whole community of catty bitches there. And we all talk and spill the shit. And we have uh, drinks on Saturdays. We have our happy hour. So you will love it. And there's additional... And just like crap content as well as other shows. Okay, I digress. Um, Lisa, Lisa is mad at Herbert for not wearing his George Washington costume, which is an obvious nod to his role in Hamilton. Mm, yes. You know what? I didn't even get that. Oh, thanks for pointing that out. Well, I didn't even. I didn't know he was in Hamilton. Somebody in our comments posted that out. Yeah. So thank you for doing the research for us. But I'm fully into the fantasy of him in a George oh, Washington sure. costume. Without his pants on, yes. I know. I wish the shirt was off and he just had on that like the lame vest or something. But you know you what's know. funny is at the party, they were talking about Naya's like, "There's no hot guys here," and Seema's like, "I know they're all something something to do with dad bods." I'm like, "Are you dad bod shaming you, bitch?" Fucking I'm like. Bitch. Are you kidding me? There should only be dad pods at any party I go to. Yeah. I've asked that question before I go. Are there any skinny guys here with abs? Well, then I'm not going. There should be dad only, dad bod only parties. That is correct. So I don't know what's wrong with, with Seema. She doesn't like dad bods. That takes points away from her. Yeah. Her I'm starting. To, I'm starting to not like her. Mm, um, me too. Anthony approaches the hot gladiator who he hooked up with, and his wife shows up. The wife must be completely dumb because he's wearing a harness and straight men yeah, are he's not gay. wearing harnesses. Um, so the girls dance the night away. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so this was, it's a pretty good start to the episode. They're out partying. I remember liking when they went to the gay club in the original series. And I think that's where Carrie met Oliver, the shoe, the guy that sold shoes. And he took her to Bungalow 8 or whatever. And then, mm. and then he's the hotel manager in White Lotus season one. That guy, he's really cute. So I like seeing them out partying amongst real people. It's fun. Um, so back at Lisa and Herbert's apartment, he he has donned the George Washington costume and he mounts Lisa. <laughs> and he mounts Lisa. Yeah, and she's like, "You look bizarrely hot." I'm like, "Bizarrely hot? I don't know what he could possibly wear to not be hot, <laughs> honestly." So I'm like, sometimes, like, I hate characters who say things that just don't make any sense. Like, oh my God, I'm seeing you in a whole new way. Like, what? Now, Abraham Lincoln might have been uncomfortable, but George Washington? <laughs> right. Or he comes out dressed like a baby with diaper and, and oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, something like that. He comes out dressed like, like, I don't know, JonBenet Ramsey or something. I might be like, mm, no. Oh, I don't think I can get into this. Yeah. <laughs> um, Charlotte and Harry are watching The Americans. I don't know. Do they have some paid partnership with the with TBS or something? Like, why are we I, watching? I thought that too. And, you know, I thought Charlotte was kind of funny when she was trying to, like, convince people of who she was. I look just like her. My hair's on the side. Like, <laughs> I thought that was a little funny. And then she, she, like, criticized Carrie. And I'm like, well, Carrie does always look silly, but those bows, yeah. she didn't really look. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so then Rock comes in to tell them, to tell Harry and Charlotte that a strange man in the park approached her about modeling. You can almost skip this whole part. I like, I Let's skip it. I hated this I'm part to- with Rock and this was dumb and a waste of time and it made me mad. It I agree. Let's, so stupid. Let's skip it. Carrie, Seema, and Naya are at the hotel bar, the Ritzy Hotel Bar, having drinks and the subject of how many dicks have you seen in your life comes up. 
Now, this is a cute question because only straight people keep track of things like that. <laughs> right. That, that is very true. Like that when people, true. you know, it's very, I've seen on TikTok, a lot of the Gen Zers are like, what's your body count? And I'm like, oh my God, don't ask a gay person. <laughs> I do not because I couldn't. Your say. body count? Like, <laughs> I, it's, no. <laughs> no, nobody keeps track of that anymore. Not not amongst our people. Um, so then, a sort of handsome man approaches Seema. What do you think of that guy? <laughs> sort of handsome. He's a, a little ish. He's guy, a little yeah. um, fluffy, mushy. Now, well, I don't, I'm uh, not talking about his weight. I just mean like eh. as a whole. Well, I think um, I don't know. He's a little bit nondescript and sort of boring. Like there was nothing about him that was like, oh, he's not. like he didn't have a hot. He wasn't super handsome. He was very safe. Yeah. Very safe. Very un. What is the word? Un. Fuckable. Like not scary, not dangerous. But what is the word? Not unassuming, but maybe unassuming. Maybe unassuming. Anyway. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so, and then uh, a clearly black male approaches Naya and she's thrilled. Um, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I mean, don't you think? I suppose so. The like, act- I don't know. Out of the, all the men she could have hooked up with, he's not the cutest for me. I just was like, who's this skinny this is, twink? This is her third one and not the cutest of them all. The mm-hmm. cutest one's the one who was on CSI. Was one. It's so crazy how this show is so focused on including every single identity and sexuality and everything but we can't get like a fluffier guy i know i just called the other guy fluffy but i mean like a more burly man maybe i don't know i don't know i just didn't like that casting for her and i'm sure he's a great actor and all that well you know as far as fluffy is concerned if you want to say herbert's like fluffier i mean yeah but i would have loved somebody in his lane and somebody his type why doesn't he have a friend that will bone naya that's a good question I mean, in the original series, they, Charlotte, um, had a whole episode where she was like, she read a book or something and it was like the, the best way to meet men are to talk to your married girlfriend's husbands about single guys they know. Of course it ended up being her, her married girlfriend's husband that hit it, that hit on her, not hit it, hit on her. So that kind of backfired, but I still think that's a good resource. You know what actor would like to have been on this show as Idris Elba? I love him so much, but I think he should be in anything. But wouldn't he be great on the show? Sure. I mean, he's super too big for that, probably, really, because he could even be James Bond one day, maybe. But I'd love him. He would be great. He would be great. And he's a little older, so that's good. Ugh. Um, So everyone's getting approached by men except Carrie. And I don't (laughs) think she was wearing a revealing outfit. Like, she wasn't showing enough. She's, She's not giving off the vibe of come talk to me yeah like she's out to party she just looks like she's just there with people she looks like the chaperone she does she looks like the third wheel or something like why are you here exactly yeah so um uh sima's guy has erectile dysfunction and has to jack up his cock with a tire pump before (laughs) they fuck (laughs) Now, this is funny. I mean, it's silly and easy to make fun of, but this is actually funny, and it's supposed to be funny, so I think this was successfully written and executed. I agree. I think so. I thought that was funny, too. Like, you kind of think, like, why would he really do that, like, right in front of her? Like, that's not sexy. And that he said, I have a erectile... He, like, tells her. Like, wouldn't you try to fix it, and if you couldn't fix it on your own, then maybe say something? However, I'm not mad, because you're right. It was funny. What wasn't funny is the actor who plays Seema having a no nudity clause. It's so annoying. Yeah, I mean, nobody's keeping their bra Nobody on. has sex fully clothed ever. Unless you're maybe on, like, a hood of a car or somewhere. But other than that... Yeah, unless it's, like, a real quickie in public or something and you have to, like, just lower your pants. Uh, straight yeah. people chime in. Do you, uh, straight women specifically. Do you bone with your top on or your bra on... She was wearing like a full like flannel. No, not that was a flannel. It was like a silk nighty or something. Yes, it was like full coverage. And I don't mean merry people. I mean the first time you're boning somebody, you're gonna leave that. I don't know. Do you enjoy? Well, I'm getting too personal. Go to Patreon. Um, <laughs> so then we see Carrie. She's dressed like. And I swear to God, before I even heard 
what happened a few moments later. I thought she looks she's dressed like Mary Kate Olsen in 2005. Oh god, yes. She's bad. dressed like a hobo, like a homeless person. Like she found those clothes and she just picked them off the ground and put them on. I know, but oddly, I don't hate it. I don't completely hate it anyway, but it's not flattering, definitely. Um no. So she's walking, she's talking to Seema on the phone about what had just happened, and she walks, stumbles into the bike lane and well, stands you know, there. The one thing about the Seema thing is, you have to say, I did like that Seema wasn't mad at the guy for having the penis pump. You know, she was like, it's fine. She was like, I used to have to get myself up. You know what I mean? Like, I sort of liked that she kind of was still not mad about it. She didn't, like, humiliate him. She didn't, like, you know, make fun of She was kind of still okay with it. Yeah, he was that is true. They didn't want her getting off without him, which is crazy. That's true. But the whole time I'm thinking, how did you go from Prada guy to this? Right. Prada guy to not a guy. But no, like the, um, right. When they were showing the, the um, previously on recap at the beginning of the show and they showed Zed or whatever his name is, I was like, oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> like, I totally forgot. Even after having watched this episode again. And then when I went back to watch again, I saw that again. I was like, where is he? Like, is he gone forever? I hope not. Zed is Prada guy. I think that's his name, isn't it? Zed? I don't know. We Zed? don't think we've Zed? ever actually said it. But, I mean, that is a huge jump from him down here to this. To penis pump. Yeah. Yeah. To the, yeah. Um, so here we go penis with Car- Car- Carrie's dating this guy this episode. He takes off his helmet and we're like, oh, how you doing? And... Carrie offers to go with him to the urgent care, which is a bad idea because... Well, wouldn't it have been perfect with him crash on the bike if the I have a toddler guy walked by again? <laughs> I <laughs> would love that. running joke. I time. think it should be, honestly. Better you than me, bitch. And then he just keeps walking. Absolutely. Well, I think he said that to Carrie when she was flattened in our story before. Maybe that's their line the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think comedy, those... Good comedy comes in threes. So when Carrie's down, when he's down, so it has to happen one more time. <laughs> I agree. I think the I have a toddler guy should be rolling that stroller through almost every scene. Yeah. Um, so the guy's name is George, and Carrie's like, let me take you to... She's doing way too much. This is very not realistic, but whatever. She takes him to the urgent care where she says she saw an Olsen twin go in, and I'm like, oh, okay, and you're dressed like one. Yeah, right. She's like, I fit in right there. And she's helping him fill out his paperwork, and it's just all very unbelievable with no payoff at the end of the episode, but... His business partner, Paul, calls him. Carrie thinks he's gay briefly, yada, yada. Well, Carrie's acting insane. Like Desperate. She's acting in, yeah, and stalkerish and all that stuff. First of all, when she saw an uh, Olsen twin when she went there, she probably passed a mirror. Um, but mm-hmm. she's, like, taking him there, waiting there. And, and did you think when he was, like, paying and his card wasn't working, she should have fucking paid for that? No. Why was she just standing there? This was all her fault. It was, but I'm like, as her attorney, I'm like, do not even put your name. Why are you even acknowledging oh, any is that fault? Why you think, is that why you think she didn't do it? Because she didn't want to say that she was at fault, even though she mm. is undeniably at fault. Well, she said something to that fact a little bit when she was talking to Seema later. But I'm like, why would you? You should totally run, like run away from the crime scene. <laughs> I mean, she didn't really do anything illegal as far as i know standing in the bike lane briefly on the phone i mean look we call nancy grace and have her weigh in on this um, we should because i don't know i thought she should have paid for it but maybe not maybe she should have not but she still said and then you know she ends up like waiting for him and she ends up taking him stuff i'm like calm down bitch she shows up at his house i'm like stalker i would like to restraining order that bitch she's like i know i maimed you but here's some matzo ball soup i know right i hope you feel better that's cream of mushroom. And then and then she says that the reason, this is a little later, but she's like, oh, I thought that maybe you were on hard times or something. I'm like, so you thought he was broke and injured and you still wanted to hook up with him? I know, right? That's when you, like, you know, draw the line. Like, I'm sorry you were hurt, but you're poor and awful and I'm not helping you. Yeah, she should have ran and lawyered up immediately, but whatever. Um... So here's more boring rock stuff. Let's just skip over it. Charlotte, Ugh, Charlotte and Rock are making dinner when Harry gets home and they tell him about the rough Lauren photo shoot. Blah, 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 blah. Um, he thinks it's something pervy and then acts a fool. I don't know. I'm like, if it was like Barbizon models or something, I would understand, but it's Ralph Lauren. I think that's pretty safe. Barbizon models. Right. And well, Charlotte, it says it on the card. I'm like, you're stupid. 
Mm-hmm. That wasn't funny. So, um, Carrie calls Seema, who is in her signature town car shot with her sunglasses. We've seen her in this like two or three times now. She's always in a limo or a town car. Do you think they filmed all those together in like one long reel and just like cut them up and put them in episodes? I bet they did. If they were smart, they would have. They probably did. Because we don't see any clothes or anything, which is a tragedy. Right. Um, Seema tells Carrie she's not mad at the mediocre penis pump sack she had, um, and she's not willing to write the guy off yet, which we just talked about. Naya and Miranda are on a bench. They're friends again for no reason, because I don't... Have they even been in contact that we've seen? Well, their relationships changed so much. I mean, when they met... Miranda was like racist and said she didn't think she was the professor. And then, you know, it was very much like where, you know, Naya to Miranda, why are you doing here? And like annoying, you know, like she's mm-hmm. showing up like they're really, and now they're like besties. Like what happened? And not, not only like besties, but way too comfortable. Miranda is way too comfortable telling her about. <laughs> it's her professor. Right. Yeah. She, that's how we got to know her in the first place. And now I don't know. Yeah. I just don't feel like Naya would be fucking with Miranda, but whatever. Um, Naya tells Miranda about the one night stand with the, the guy from the hotel bar. Naya suggests Miranda crash at her husband, in her husband's music room. uh, The one she was clearing out a couple episodes ago before we never heard from her. And then until Steve finds another place to live, Steve, as again, as your lawyer, do not leave the marital home (laughs) because it's better for you to stay there during the divorce. Um, we see this going on with, uh, who's the guy from the body? Kevin Costner. His wife is like refusing to leave their marital home because once you leave, you know, they're yeah, going to like giving up rights to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I say stay yeah. put Steve. Stay there. And you know, with Miranda, like, I don't know why anybody would want to be her friend. Like Naya's like inviting her into her house. I'm like, what do you think Miranda brings to a friendship? Like not interesting stories. She doesn't have it. Her life is, like, totally boring and stupid. Like, it's going to be like, guess what Che did today? Guess how Che's oh TV show... Oh, my God, show. you know that's all Miranda talks about. Do you want to come to the a comedy concert? Che. Guess what I did with a strap on. I mean, it's just Ugh. so annoying. God. Nah. Um, so And it just, it just... Why is Miranda couch surfing? Like, she's wealthy. Well, that one's broken. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they broke that <laughs> Ikea couch. Um... Carrie swings by George's house. She just keeps breaking everyone's. Every yeah, couch just she's on a her. couch break tour. <laughs> so Carrie swings by George's loft for no reason. I'm he... telling you, she just shows up. Ding dong. Is she... that the trick or treat part? I thought she was getting candy. It was on theme. <laughs> he didn't invite her. She always looks like she's wearing a costume. Okay, anyway, go on. <laughs> and then he f- foolishly like invites her in. Like you'd never invite a vampire in, emotional vampire. Never. He did. And, and then he's like, yeah, it is kind of... She's like, I know it's a little weird that I'm here. And he's like, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> 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 and she's like, oh, I brought a bunch of food. I thought you were broke. And he's like, no, it was just fraud on my credit card. Yeah, we've all heard that before. Um, George kisses Carrie. And when his business par- partner, Paul, walks in, who I'm still not convinced that Paul isn't obsessed with George. I know. I agree. Like, he's like... You know, he's pining for him. Carrie's going to wind up dead, and, and Paul's going to be the murderer. Have you ever dated a guy that lived with their straight male friend, or their even their ex-boyfriend or ex-husband? And... I have one better than that. Mm-hmm. I, I won't make a long story, because this is off topic. You have to go to Patreon. So I dated a guy who had a girl in his life, and they were obsessed with each other. Like, he would, like, have dinner with me or hang out and go sleep with her. Not to have sex just to sleep together was it Lady they Gaga? were obsessed well may as well have been but that to me is crazy oh absolutely no so. I, I yeah go to patreon but i've told many stories about this too like any guy that has a too close feel like a hag that's too close to him absolutely not yes we are no. not nope run for the hills okay back on track Che tells Miranda at dinner that her agent, their agent, is flying in to watch the pilot and the test uh, audience or the the focus group react to the pilot of their show. And Miranda tell and Miranda's like, okay. By the way, I found a 
a spare room and somewhere to to live until you accept me. Yeah, and then she's like eating some really spicy stuff, and Shay's like, "I don't want to get curry lingus." I'm like, "You're making me want to puke." Like, <laughs> I hate you as the moments tick, Shay. I hate you more and more. I mean, I know, and it is cringy, but at least they're punning again because pun puns were a big part of the original show. So that it, is true. It was usually Carrie doing it, but I'll I'll accept it. Uh, I'm not happy about it, but I'll accept it. <laughs> um. Charlotte and Rocker at the Ralph Lauren photo shoot. Carrie Carrie and Miranda are shopping. (laughs) Let's just re-edit the episodes. I'm telling you, like, maybe, maybe I'll do that. I'll, can I somehow, I will, I'll rewatch this episode if I can cut out the rock park, just edit all of that out and then just watch it. It's like making a new album that you love and cut out the songs you hate. Actually, yeah. But, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm really only interested in the scenes with Carrie, if I can be perfectly honest. Get rid of everything else. I mean, this is the evidence of one that, I don't know, it's such a mixed bag. Like, there are little tiny bits of each story that I kind of like, but I don't love any of them. And put them together, and it doesn't make them better. No, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay, Carrie and Miranda are shopping. And <laughs> some. Goals. I wish it was Kohl's. It looks it's, it's <laughs> well, like it looks like a yard sale. They're what, at what Salvation Army, Salvation Antiques Roadshow Rejects. She's wearing that stupid hat that she clearly bought from there. Oh. She probably walked in and was like, "Look at this hat!" and blew the dust off and put it on. Another hideous hat. Stupid hats. I'm so tired of looking at them. Yeah, and they're looking at this like, why would they? Why would you do this? Why would you go to like this crappy junk store to get a mattress? God, to find a bed that someone died on. Someone died or peed in or or bled to death on or anything. It's like, why would you do that? They're, they they're, have money. They have money. Miranda's like, look, some bunk beds from the Heaven's Gate compound. This would be great. <laughs> right, right. I think these were left over from the hospital that was condemned. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, Carrie tells Miranda about George, but Miranda is not even listening, which go- she's not a good friend, like you just said. Like, who would... But usually it's Carrie that's self-absorbed, but I guess it's Miranda's, like, it's my time to be all about me. Ugh. Um, okay, more photo shoot stuff. Nope. Che is watching the focus group's reaction to the pilot. Now, this is, I guess, my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> Did you notice in that room, they had Lutz chips on the table did you notice that Lutz 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 brand l-u-t-z like it's not a thing in in where you live Lutz it is here and I saw those and and then something had this ding on my phone and it was a coupon for Lutz chips I'm like what no I'm kidding that didn't happen but (laughs) oh my god I would have believed it (laughs) it's Lutz with an L I've seen Uts with a U Lutz and yeah l-u-t-z they thought their barbecue ones are very good I love a barbecue chip, baby. Put it right in my They're mouth. Good, but I don't know that you can get those where you live. Maybe. But I don't think okay. so. Um, one of the participants with actual sense says the character of <laughs> Che is one big joke. It's like a boomer joke. Dad jokes. And the guy that's moderating the focus group is like, does anyone else have anything negative to say about Che Diaz? And almost everyone like, raises their hand. Every single Me too. Person. I did too. I did too. Did you raise your hand at home? Comment below. I, yes, I did. It was like romper room. Now this felt a little almost meta because it's so true to life. Um, well, it is. It's like it's funny that they this show has a focus group. Why didn't and just like didn't thank just you like that have one? Because clearly, if they did, they didn't listen to anyone in it. They're like watching from behind the the two way mirror, and they're like, hmm. Let's not listen to any of these people. Let's do the opposite of what they say. I mean, we're basically the focus group. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Right? All, all of YouTube at this point. I don't know why, where, yeah, where don't was the focus? even need fo- to have one of these. Just listen to our show. <sighs> maybe this is when they, maybe the week before they, the writers were listening to us. And they were like, oh my God, a focus group. We should write that in the show. No, bitch, do it for this show. Isn't it sad that SAG didn't go on strike while this was being filmed? Absolutely. <laughs> Where was a writer's strike when right, this travesty one, was taking it. place? <laughs> um, let's see. But maybe it'll postpone season three. Here's hoping. <gasps> Fingers crossed. 
Miranda tries to console Che, who is very upset because they bought that up or renting or bought that apartment that they can't afford without the TV show money. Why would you even get that in the first place? Well, I know the TV show hasn't really been picked up, apparently. So why right. would you do that? Tony Danza is already booked for Dancing with the Stars. He's not even counting. He knows it's shit. Yeah, he's out. He's like, I don't give a shit about this. I'm Tony freaking Danza. I'm Tony Danza, bitch. Um... <laughs> che isn't having it, and Che and Miranda's trying to build Che up, and Che is finally like, "Stop being my cheerleader. You're annoying. Can you go leave and Get go out. be somewhere else?" And Miranda is so pussy whipped at this point. We don't even recognize her from no. her former glory, and she's like, "Sure, can I just give you a hug first? Now, look, we've all had pathetic moments in our lives, but this it, she's too old and too accomplished to be doing that. This is not okay." It's not okay. Like, people in your life, if they're struggling and they tell you to get out and stay away, they're assholes and you should not be with them. I'm like, they should want you in. They should take comfort in you. You know? If they mm -hmm. don't take comfort in you, then fuck them. You don't need to be with them. It's not tr It's not meant to be. If they don't take comfort in you, goodbye. I think Che is a bad communicator, which is crazy because usually lesbians are great at emotions. <laughs> well, she's not a les a les a les Well, les what I don't know what to call them. They're, they're whatever. Um, yeah. I'll say women. Women are usually great at emotional intelligence. And so if so if Miranda is being your cheerleader, I find I understand. I can relate to how that would be annoying Mer Miranda, you're feeling down on yourself and Miranda's like, "You're great. It, you'll just do another show." I would be like, "Shut the fuck up too." But instead of saying, "Go away," why don't you tell her what you do need? Well, that's the thing is, is that's what you do. You like, if you have someone and you, that you know is like maybe depressed or whatever, whether it's a friend or, you know, lover or whatever you say, what do you need from me? Do you need to listen? Do you need advice? Do you need to relate to you? Like, what do you need right now? And they're mm -hmm. like, I don't need anything from you. Just hold me or whatever it is. Yeah. Why aren't they spooning about. now? Yes. Whatever. Uh, and Miranda is such a... She's so whipped. It's it's just embarrassing. There, you know, there's not... I guess Seema is supposed to be the strong one out of all these girls, but we don't even really care for her at this point. And... No, did you like her, like, with that guy at the bar, and she's like, why are you saying nettle or whatever, Jen? Like, it's a thing. I thought she seemed a bitchy to me, not, like, cute. Like, why would she be... You know, I... She's uh, one dimensional. Yeah, she's one dimensional. Like, why wouldn't you, if she was really flirting with him or whatever, <clears throat> or playing along, wouldn't you be like a little cuter? I, I would be, but you know how I am with flirting. I'm like amazing at it. So um, I would be like cutesy about it, not like, why are you saying that? I'd be like, well, you know what? I'll go say it to somebody else. Bye, bitch. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think I could see Seema with a, a, a much younger guy, actually. Oh, for sure. Because she's very dominant. You know, Samantha Jones had, and Seema is, like we've discussed, the surrogate Samantha. Samantha had was well-rounded, even though she was a ball-busting, businesswoman, strong, confident, f successful. She also had soft and tender moments. Mm. And Seema, we haven't seen any of that. And a lot of times, I think last week, she was barely in the episode at all. She was just kind of there for Carrie to, to be Carrie's sounding board. So how are we supposed to get close to her. I agree. The only thing I did kind of like with Seema, and we kind of talked about it, is when she was in bed with that guy, even though he got annoyed with her for using her vibrator, that she didn't, like, leave. She still stayed in bed with him when she did that and was kind of tenderish about it. Well, she... Like, we just need... We see more of that, I think. Yeah, she... So, Seema is getting uh, pounded by the bike pump guy, and she has to pull... You know, he's done. He finished. So, she's, she's like, you know, I didn't quite finish. So, she pulls out her very chic gold tone vibrator yes and which straight is, in from a harry potter quidditch match sure uh remember when the harry potter vibrating broom scandal oh yes but it, it wasn't like a photo. big king kong dildo it was a classy <laughs> <laughs> and hilarious if she would have pulled out the <laughs> biggest dildo that exists and she's like Ooh, ah. And she, like, just, it all disappears. Miranda like, walks in with the strap on and she's oh like, Oh my god, yes. Let's do like, this. Here, bitch. That's and, what I, oh, that's what I thought he was putting on. By the way, when he got that pump out, I thought he was getting out a strap on. I really did. I was like, and then he pulled out a pump. And I was like, oh, not what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> I mean, that pump was pretty comical. I, I have I never, it was be a strap on. <laughs> I've never seen one in person. Not yet, but I, I don't think it's quite that. Literal. Uh, uh, 
Yes, well, it's huge. And, like, you would think it would be, like, this is 2023. They should be, like, the size of AirPods or something, like, tiny. Like, this, you well, know. I've, I, I've heard of ones where they're, like, in your ball sack and you squeeze it to pump the cock up. Oh, my God. Could you imagine being Hold on, let me just pump it up, like, the, the they... shoes from the 90s. Yes. Pump it. Like... Just pump it up. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I'm just pumping it up, baby. Um, yeah, I would stop laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> like a stress ball. So this was, although all this is kind of silly, it is funny. And this was, this kind of did harken back to the original show and the way that it was executed. Like, it, it's funny, it's silly, it's outrageous. And it, it worked for me. This whole thing with Seema, this episode. Um, despite our comments about how she, our feelings about how she should be, we should see more of her. Hmm being emotional and caring loving whatever but i did think this was all successful as as a comedic thing yes more towards what we're looking for Mm -hmm. for i still think the episode should be 30 minutes though this is still too long it's 15 minutes too long um carrie and george are about to hook up um carrie is practically wearing a burqa i think we see a (laughs) sliver of skin (laughs) right she's just like taking bed sheets and cutting a hole where then where her head goes through and it's like Mrs. Roper. She Mrs. Like Roper covers head to toe like Carrie. And, and you love, and it's crazy because she has a banging body. Like yeah, she has like no sex appeal this season. Like she just dressed like 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 Holly Hobby or something. Like I think she needs to chop. Let's fix Carrie. I think she needs to chop about eight to ten inches off that hair because she looks like an old witch. Yeah, and I'm not talking about her face or anything like that. And I know she did play a witch in Hocus Pocus. What do you think of her straightening her hair? Do you think her, do you think her head is too long, like lengthwise to like have straight hair? That's not a criticizing her head. I'm just talking about with long, straight, flat. Cause it gets flat. I think the hair is that. too long for straight hair at this point. I, and I like, I think a little wave would be fun. Okay. Maybe um, just a slighter, like a little less of a wave. Could we sound gayer right now? Well, we're fixing her. We're, we're fixing her. It. Extreme home makeover, Carrie Bradshaw edition. Yes, we've done it many times. Listen to our, our past episodes <laughs> of the fashion, which we'll have for this. So. I just think, she's I don't wearing... know. I just, everything is so, she's wearing bed sheets just with holes in the, for arm. I don't That's know. That's it. That's all. Mm. Her, she buys her all her outfits from Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're about to hook up when uh, George's business partner calls again on FaceTime. Are you a FaceTimer? Jesus timer? Christ. Me? Um, no. I'm not no. either. Unless it's... Not even like my parents or anything. Like every once in a while I will, but mostly no. Do you, Does this happen to you? If somebody calls me on FaceTime and I'm in bed or in at home or something, I hide. <laughs> because I feel like they're looking at me, even though I know you have to answer the call for the camera to turn on but when it shows up like you see you know how your camera turns on when a facetime call is coming through yeah i take more clothes off i'm like hey (laughs) please (laughs) hey mom hey no i'm kidding (laughs) hey mom and dad Uh yeah um so george i don't even know what he did why did he abandon carrie in the bed with the phone what did he go to do pee pump up his cock probably one of those things maybe both so the phone's laying face up and Carrie just kind of slithers away. Bake while... a cake. <laughs> yeah, bake a cake. Get Chinese food. Well, well. <laughs> Fix a drink. So he's trying to talk to Carrie and I'm just like, oh my God, I could, I do not blame her. Look, this guy was fun. Although we never got to see him naked or even shirtless. Um, it was nice knowing George. Good luck with your broken wrist. I liked him. See, so I was watching this and I was like, you know, kind of hoping it would work out, but I know Aiden's coming. So of course it's not gonna, I kind of wish I wouldn't have known about Aiden. I mean, I'm glad I do because it's something to look forward to, but I kind of wish I didn't because then it would have given hope for me that this could have worked out already knowing that it wasn't going to, it was kind of disappointing a little bit. Cause I did like him. I thought he was nice and smart and you know, Carrie's getting so mad. I'm like, this is like a project he's just trying to complete and then maybe things will be normal after this. Maybe he just needs to get through some shit. Quit being a bitch. And he's like, oh, I forgot to do some. I'm like, everybody is so forgetful on this show. Well, you they know, all like, have Alzheimer's Her- and dementia. I guess because Herbert forgot to do whatever for the, send the invitations for that dinner party. Um, Lisa forgot to order the cake. This guy forgot to send over the most important thing in his life. Like, what's wrong with these people? This is cheap comedy. It's like Three's Company. 
I love Three's Company, so I'm not criticizing it. But the comedy is pretty simple. They like, wish oh, they were I Three's Company. To the invita- oh, I know. Three's Company is amazing. But I shouldn't have compared it to that. But I'm just thinking of like these like simple situations. It worked for Three's Company. Not for now. Oh, I forgot to hit send. Oh. I mean, I, sli- I agree with How a lot. How madcap is that? <laughs> madcap. I agree with a lot of what you said. I do. I kind of liked when Carrie dated a different guy every week. Because no, no, I'm good with that. I just wanted to hope it could have worked out. Yeah, and I know knowing what you mean. that already that it wasn't going to wasn't as exciting. But no, I'm good with it or not. It could. I'm good with it not working out. I guess. Just I just wanted the hope that it would. And if we're gonna see a guy for one, if you're dating a guy for one episode, I feel like we should at least get to see him naked. Oh, for sure. Where is the nudity in this show? Shirtless. We definitely need to see more more ass. Yeah. I want more TNA on this show. The only guy Whatever we... happened to TNA? Whatever happened. The only guy we got to see slightly naked was the bike pump guy, and I wasn't really into it. Not so much. No, Not... I wanted more. Yeah. So, I mean, could it, couldn't they have thrown in a scene of the hot black guy, even though, albeit gay, boning Naya? Or did they? Sure. Was that in there? Or did I miss it? No, they didn't show that at all. That would have been good. I definitely think that Peter, not Peter, what's his name? George, I think he should have been yeah. at some stage of undress. At least his shirt off. All these people have sex with clothes on, all of them. <laughs> Just a hole in a sheet. <laughs> like... It's very puritanical or something. Like, what is that? The, the Amish? No, I don't know what it is. You don't No, no, it. no. The, the, um, the, um. Latter day Saints? No. Who is it that never the... takes their. It's it, like a scent to get naked. <laughs> it's, um, who the fuck is it? Oh, now I have to find find it. Branch Davidian? I don't know who it is. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the, um. Quakers? No, it's it's the Jewish people that are not reformed. Hasidic? Hasidic Jews, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I just feel like we're going to get hate comments for we're gonna, no. pop, <laughs> speculating about that. We but... don't know. We don't know. We're just. We're just no, because there's a whole show on Netflix. I watched it, so I'm an expert. Even though oh, so there. If it's on Netflix, then it's true. Yeah, it Sorry. was a whole show. Um, I watched it. Okay, well, that. that's the episode. Hopefully Aiden comes next week, and hopefully he hasn't been chowing down at Applebee's. You know, he did the famously did the voiceover for the Applebee's commercial. Oh, God. Or was it... Gonna be a little bee stung Like, oh. is that what you think? Or was it Outback Steakhouse? He did something no. with a slab of ribs. But we saw, like, a picture of them... And he looked good. So remember, like, there was some mm-hmm. pa- paparazzi photo or some shit. <clears throat> and so he looked good. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I'm I'm optimistic. Yes, me too. I can't believe it. Just because I'm drinking. Not really. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. Please subscribe, please, for the love of God. Um, we appreciate you. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Thanks for listening. Bye. Welcome back to the broadcast. Your favorite podcast.